Hey everybody, I'm back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, this is going to be a quick little tutorial on how to use a stretched sprue to uh, fill a hole either in your body or a chassis or uh, you know various places on a model. Uh, it's a very easy process and to do this we're going to be using a sanding stick, a hobby knife with number 11 blade in it, and uh, we're going to be using a pair of uh, sprue cutters. And I'm going to be using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement on this, or you can use, you know, whichever glue that you uh, use most of the time. And, uh, you know, anything pretty much will work, but uh, I would recommend either Tamiya or the uh, 8872 from uh, Model Master. And next thing we'll be using is a lighter and a piece of the parts tree. And I've got a little scrap piece of plastic here that uh, kind of simulates a... Uh, C channel, something like you would see on a uh, truck frame rail. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to make a hole in this. Uh, very easy. Um, now, of course, the pin vise is not something that you would need because the hole would already be there. But if you have, say, two holes in your uh, frame rail that you need to fill up, and uh, the not so good way to do that is to uh, fill that full of uh, Bondo or filler or something like that. Uh, this is a much better way to do it and it'll come out a lot better for you. And we're just going to make the holes just a little bit bigger here. There we go. And what I like to do is actually come in when I'm doing this, uh, if this hole was already in the frame, what you want to do is come on the inside, if this is your C-channel, and this is the outside, you want to come on the inside of it, and just take your hobby knife and just spin that a little bit in there. And you're making the inside of the frame rail, uh, the diameter of the hole, a little bit bigger than it is on the outside. And I'll show you why here in just a minute while we do that. And same thing with that one. We made it a little bit bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. So that's what we have right now. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the lighter and heat up our piece of uh, parts tree. And this is just out of uh, Tamiya, actually out of my Ferrari kit that I did a video on. And this may be too short to uh, do what I'm trying to do here. So I may have to grab another piece of parts tree. Yeah, let me grab a, another piece of parts tree. It's a little bit longer. Uh, let's see what we got here in the, in the box. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here's a piece of parts tree. It's a little bit longer. And remember, when you're doing this kind of work here, uh, not all parts trees are the same size. Uh, you can get, you know, bigger pieces. Uh, they make some smaller sections. So definitely uh, try to keep some of your leftover parts trees, at least clip some uh, straight pieces like this out of them, and keep those handy. So we're going to try this one. This one's a little bit longer here. It should work a little bit better for us. So we're going to heat that up, and we're just going to stretch that out a little bit. And, and this is definitely not stretching the way that I want it to here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, this one's working out pretty good. So we're just going to stretch that out and let it cool. And that's looking pretty good there. So the next thing that we want to do is you have to take into consideration how big the hole is that you need to fill up in the frame rail or whatever you're you know working with. So we're just going to cut a section off of this and we're going to end up with something that looks like uh, that right there. And we're going to go from the inside of the frame rail. Now, if you notice, this has a taper on it, and that's why we spun the hobby knife in there to create a taper. And it gives you a little bit more of a glue surface uh, inside the frame rail to get this to go into. And once you slide it through, it should pretty much fill up on the outside. And if it doesn't, I'll show you a trick for that also. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and put a little bit of the Tamiya Extra Thin right around the area where you uh, carved it out with the hobby knife there a little bit and created a taper on it. And you want to slide this in from the back side 
of the part that you're working on. Like I say, whether it be the body or whether it be, you know, a frame rail or a chassis component or anything like that, make sure you slide it in from the non-display side uh, is the best way to do it. And that one actually filled up pretty good. So we're going to let that sit there for right now. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit more extra thin around it here on the inside edge. And if you want to make sure that the outside of this seals up real nice and, and makes a uh, and fills everything up real good on the outside so you don't have a lot of uh, extra body work to do, uh, this is a little trick that I use. I actually take uh, the little bit that's sticking out and hold it up here. Uh, you can see this section right here that's sticking out. You want to cut. about that much off of it and now you'll have that much sticking out now what I like to do is take the lighter and this is the part that you have to be very careful on and you want to just have the flame going and move it over close to the piece of parts tree but you're not touching the parts tree uh, and just as you move it over closer to it you will actually see the end of that tubing start to mushroom and that's what you're after. You don't want to touch the flame to the tubing. You just kind of want it to melt back toward the frame rail. And it's looking pretty good. And if it gets a little bit out of uh, where it starts going at an angle, you can see I just touched it with my finger and I kind of straightened it right back up and got it going the right direction there for us. And this takes a little bit of practice. You don't want to get too close to stuff with the flame because it will, you know, mess up more things than just putting this in or messing up this little pin. So be very careful with that. But we've got that mushroom back now, and that's actually locked in the frame just like a rivet. The next thing that I'll do is come on the inside with the sprue cutters, and I'll go ahead and clip that off flush with the inside. And now that we have that little mushroom piece on there, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm actually rushing this. What you'd want to do is kind of uh, let the glue dry before you would start putting a flame or anything like that to it. Uh, give the glue about, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so to dry out. If you have multiple um, holes or in the chassis or the frame rail or whatever that you need to fill, you know, go ahead and get them all filled and leave all the pieces long. And then once the glue dries, you can go in and uh, go ahead and clip everything off and finish it down. So I'm using a heavier grit side of the sanding stick here. And we're just going to knock that back a little bit. And then I'm going to flip the uh, sanding stick over and go to the next lighter grit. And what you're doing here is you're just trying to sand this little plug down until it is flush with the surface and you don't feel it and another little pointer that I like to uh, do on that to make sure that you don't have to use any filler or anything like that because uh, I did have a guy tell me that anytime that you do this you have to put filler in it and that is not true uh, leave this a little bit high so actually where you're sanding you hold it up here on the camera you can see a little black dot leave the little black dot a little bit up off of the um, surface and go ahead and do all your primer and all that kind of stuff. And then, as you come back in to do your finish sanding, you can actually come across that very lightly. And if the primer gets knocked off of this, you know that that's still a little bit high. And you can go ahead and sand that down very lightly until you start seeing the primer disappear on the outer edges of it. When you get to that point, stop. And then you can go ahead and just primer this whole thing, and it'll be nice and flush. And, you know, to get in here and get on the inside of the frame rail, um, I have a lot of different sanding sticks, but uh, this is a fairly heavy sanding stick here, but it's real thin. I'll come in and actually work the inside pretty much the same way that we did on the outside of the frame rail. And once you get that all sanded down and done, uh, pretty much once you have it primed and you have it painted, you would never know that there was ever a hole in there. And it's, you don't have to use any filler at all on it. You're only using the parch tree, which is free, and a little bit of glue, and a lighter. And not everybody's going to have a lighter laying around, but 
for all us guys that smoke or whatever, we have one. And really, if you don't smoke, having a lighter in your hobby room would be something handy. Uh, they do come in handy from time to time. So uh, when everything's all said and done, uh, that's pretty much what you should have right there. You can see the black dot. That's where the hole was. And uh, it's nice and smooth. Everything feels pretty good. So prime that. And once you get it sanded out, you're done. And that's a cheap and, and easy and very effective way of uh, filling in holes on your chassis or body or whatever. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns on this one, uh, just leave me a message and I'll be more than glad to answer them for you. And like always, I thank you for watching and supporting Showtime Studios, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.